Stepper motors are classified as brushless DC electric motors that divide full rotation into an equal number of steps. They are used in many applications in our daily lives that include CD players, electric tools, and automation equipment. As the name suggests, each pulse of electricity produces one step of rotational motion. For this exercise, we'll discover the basics of stepper motor technology, beginning with the brushless DC motor. Unlike DC brush motors, DC brushless motors do not utilize brushes to control current. Permanent magnets bonded directly to the rotor of the brushless DC motor create rotational motion as current passes through the stator. A rotating magnetic field is formed by electrical pulses generated by a converter. As the rotor turns, a rotor position sensor provides feedback to the converter so the required stator field rotational sequence is maintained. The change in sensor state reports back to the converter, which continually switches the phase to the windings to keep the motor turning. The sequence is further explained here when the Hall effect sensors turn on. Coils are energized by the converter. The coils alternate in order, creating the magnetic field to turn the rotor. The sequence is repeated with the next set of Hall effect sensors and coils to continue rotation. With the DC brushless motor being the foundation of stepper motors, let's look at how the stepper works. Stepper motors are so named because each pulse of electricity turns the motor one step. A simple stepper motor system is comprised of four elements. The user interface allows the operator to input motion parameters such as speed, distance, and direction. Examples of an interface would be a programmable logic controller or data entry terminal. The indexer converts the data input from the user interface to motion signals that the motor will turn to a defined position and speed. The driver then takes the data from the indexer and provides current pulses to the motor. The number of steps the motor turns is equal to the number of pulses transmitted to the driver. The stepper motor is a brushless electric motor that converts pulses into mechanical shaft rotation. Each pulse moves the shaft through a fixed angle defined by the multiple toothed electromagnets arranged around a gear-shaped rotor. Stepper motors have three step modes of operation that include full, half, and micro-stepping. The type of step mode output of any stepper motor is dependent on the design of the driver. The driver also controls both the step angle and speed of the motor by switching the field coils in a set sequence. For full step mode operation, energizing each set of coils sequentially, the rotor can be made to rotate or step from one position to the next by an angle determined by its step angle. Shaft rotation is achieved by energizing both windings while reversing the current alternately. Switching coils A, B, C, D, one coil at a time repetitively, will rotate the rotor in the forward direction. In this example, there are six steps arranged on the rotor 60 degrees apart. 24 steps are required to make a full rotation at 15 degree increments. For half-step mode, the stepper motor's resolution can be doubled by altering the switching of coils. Half-stepping occurs when one winding is energized and then two windings are energized alternately, causing the rotor to rotate at half the distance. Switching coils in this combination will rotate in the reverse direction. 
As you can see in this example, 48 steps are required to make a full rotation at 7.5 degree increments. Microstepping controls the current in the motor winding to a degree that further subdivides the number of positions between poles. To achieve microsteps, the coils are only partially energized. As we apply a maximum voltage of 5 VDC to coil A and a minimum voltage of 0 VDC to coil B, rotor position 1 will line up. Reducing the voltage to coil A and increasing voltage to coil B, the rotor will begin to rotate in a clockwise direction and continue until the voltage is 0 at coil A and 5 at coil B. This process continues at all coils within the stator to provide accurate positioning. As you can see in this example, 120 steps are required to make a full rotation at 3 degree increments. The three factors that determine the type of work a motor can produce are speed, torque, and horsepower. Speed is defined as how fast the motor performs its work. For example, a shaft can rotate slowly or quickly. The typical units of measurement for rotational motor speed are revolutions per minute or RPM. Work is defined as a force applied over a distance. In the case of flywheels, winches, and motors, the work is called torque. Torque is a special type of work that produces rotation. Torque occurs when a force acts on a radius. Typical units of measurement for torque are pound-foot. The torque illustrated here is equal to one pound-foot. Horsepower is defined as the rate at which work is accomplished. Years ago, before motors were invented, most work was accomplished manually. It was estimated that one horse could accomplish approximately 33,000 pound-foot of work per minute, and thus the term horsepower was born. In modern terms, horsepower is simply another unit of measurement for power and can be translated into watts, BTUs, joules, or any unit of power. Units that measure motor power are typically in horsepower or watts. You can manipulate the connection among speed, torque, and horsepower by understanding how they are related. The work accomplished here, the torque, is represented by the weight moving along the conveyor. If torque remains constant, speed and horsepower are proportional. As the speed, or RPM, increases, horsepower increases to maintain constant torque. If speed decreases, horsepower decreases to maintain constant torque. Let's say we wish to keep torque constant but want to increase the production of barrels. If the torque or number of barrels on the conveyor belt remains constant but speed increases, then the horsepower of the motor also increases. In other words, a more powerful motor is required to produce the same amount of torque more quickly. Similarly, the opposite is true. If we wish torque to remain constant and decrease speed, then the horsepower of the motor also decreases. If speed remains constant, then torque and horsepower are proportional. As the torque increases, horsepower also increases to maintain constant speed. As the torque decreases, horsepower also decreases to maintain constant RPM. Let's say we want production to increase, but the speed of the conveyor to remain constant. If torque increases, horsepower also increases to compensate. This means a more powerful motor is needed to produce more torque at the same speed. Similarly, the opposite is true. 
If we wish speed to remain constant and decrease torque, then horsepower also decreases. If horsepower remains constant, then speed and torque are inversely proportional. As the torque increases, speed decreases to maintain constant horsepower. As torque decreases, speed must increase to maintain constant horsepower. Let's say we want the horsepower of our motor to remain constant, but wish to increase the torque. If torque increases, the speed of the conveyor decreases so that the horsepower required of the motor remains constant. Similarly, the opposite is true. If the torque decreases, the speed of the conveyor increases and the horsepower generated by the motor remains constant. To calculate the amount of horsepower required to move a horizontal load, we must first consider the occurrence of sliding friction. Friction occurs when two materials resist moving against one another. For example, it's much easier to pull a block of metal across a smooth field of ice than it is to pull it across a rocky path. The friction between the block and the rocks is greater than the friction between metal and ice. The amount of friction generated depends primarily on the materials which are in sliding contact. The coefficient of friction, symbolized by the Greek letter mu, is a dimensionless quantity which describes the ratio of the force of the friction between two bodies and the force of them pressing together. This coefficient can be used to help determine the amount of force required to move a load horizontally across a surface. Many manufacturing handbooks contain tables that publish the coefficient of friction for common materials. The amount of force required to slide a load and overcome the surface friction is calculated by multiplying the coefficient of friction by the weight of the load. Once this force is determined, it's easy to calculate the required horsepower to move a horizontal load. First, find the horizontal force required by multiplying the coefficient of friction by the weight. Then, determine the amount of work required by multiplying the force by the distance in feet to be moved. Next, calculate the power by dividing the work by the time in minutes. Then, convert to horsepower by dividing the result by 33,000. Finally, add 5% to compensate for estimated friction losses in the motor or cylinder. Let's try an example. Assume the barrel weighs 100 pounds. The coefficient of friction between the belt and the platform is 0.3 and the barrels move 20 feet in 0.1 minutes. We can determine the horsepower required of the conveyor motor by accomplishing the following calculations. First, find the horizontal force required by multiplying the coefficient of friction by the force of the weight, which is 100 pounds. In this system, the horizontal force is 30 pounds. Then, determine the amount of work required by multiplying the force by the distance, 20 feet. For this system, the work required is 600 foot-pounds. Next, calculate the power by taking the work and dividing by the time, 0.1 minutes. The power is equal to 6,000 foot-pounds per minute. Then, convert to horsepower by dividing the result by 33,000. This yields a result of 0.18 horsepower. Finally, add 5% to compensate for estimated friction losses in the motor or cylinder. The final result is 0.19 horsepower. With this result, system designers can ensure the right size motor is available to operate the conveyor. If the distance to be traveled isn't on a horizontal surface, the angle of the surface must be taken into account. To determine the total force required, we must add the force required to raise the load to a higher elevation with the force required to overcome the friction. The total force is equal to the weight times sine A plus the weight times the coefficient of friction times cosine A.
Once these two forces are combined, we can continue with the same steps used previously to calculate the size of the motor required. First, find the horizontal force required by adding the force required to raise the load to a higher elevation with the force required to overcome the friction. In this system, the horizontal force is 75.98 pounds. Then, determine the amount of work required by multiplying the force by the distance, 20 feet. For this system, the work required is 1,519.6 foot-pounds. Next, calculate the power by taking the work and dividing by the time 0.1 minutes. The power is equal to 15,196 foot-pounds per minute. Then, convert to horsepower by dividing the result by 33,000. This yields a result of 0.46 horsepower. Finally, add 5% to compensate for estimated friction losses in the motor or cylinder. The final result is 0.48 horsepower. With this result, system designers can ensure the right size motor is available to operate the conveyor on an incline. As expected, it takes a stronger motor to move weight up an incline than on a horizontal surface. The relationships among horsepower, speed, RPM, work, power, and force allow technicians and system designers to determine the appropriate characteristics of motors, cylinders, and other fluid system components required to operate any system.